Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to April's Q&A. Um, I put a shout out for a ton of questions and I got a ton of questions which is really nice. So um, I'm going to go through a few of them and we'll see kind of where we get to. I don't want to make this too long and um, the idea is that these Q&As are like short snippets of information just so you've got a platform on which to, to ask me questions. now. A lot of the questions I was asked, I'm actually going to turn into full videos just because they were so good and they need more than, you know, just this small amount of time. So I want to start with a, a question I was asked on Facebook about how old is too old to start racing and kind of what is the, the best age to start. Now, you could probably say that the best age to start is when you're a kid. So I'm talking about, you know, the little tiny kids that you see karting at like three, four, five, six years old. Um, but... That doesn't mean that you can't race at any other point throughout your your life. If you're fit and healthy, there's no reason that you can't race, regardless of your age. So I know plenty of racing drivers who have got behind the wheel for the first time in their 40s, 50s and 60s. So don't ever think that, that you're too old to get started. You don't have to be a spring chicken. You don't have to be a child. You can race whenever suits you, whenever you're ready, whenever you have the finances. Um, don't put it off get out there and do it because the sooner you do it the more time you'll have to enjoy it and you'll regret it if you don't um and plenty of drivers say i don't know i didn't do this sooner especially if they're winning races and doing really well so don't wait to start don't think that it's too late to start whenever you're kind of ready to start racing um and even in terms of getting sponsorship you can still do that as an adult in their 30s 40s you don't have to be a child up to about 25 to be a successful racing driver and to get sponsorship i promise you i know plenty of racers that have have done well um and have got things paid for through sponsorship and are working with fantastic businesses to promote them and actually, I think those of you who are maybe in your 30s, 40s or even 50s and are thinking about racing, you're probably in a good position to have something unique to offer to businesses because you're you're not a kid. You're not a teenager. You are probably already have the, the experience of working with businesses, maybe even own your own business. So, yeah, it's never too late to start. Another question I was asked is where do you start? So what what is the first step to starting out in motorsport um, as a racing driver, I would suggest looking at the different types of series that you're interested in and going from there. So let's say you want to do some kind of open top racing at club level, kind of relatively affordable. I would go to races like the Caterhams, some of the prototype racing at club level, Mazdas, that kind of thing. If you're more into doing some kind of tin top racing, then I'd look at like the Clio 182 series, maybe one of the, the mini challenge series. Go to these races, get to know the drivers, get to know the organisers, get to know the racing and see if you really enjoy it and could see yourself on the grid there. Um, and then start to look at how much these things cost. It might be that you only do one race in your first season. It might be that you only do a couple. Um, but you should be in a position that you can put some of your own money forward uh, to be able to at least try things out, even if it's just testing. It's good to get behind the wheel of a race car. Um, so I would suggest kind of starting there and, and kind of looking at what's out there and maybe doing a few tests or track days maybe to see to see what suits your driving style because it might be that if your road car is rear wheel drive and you are suddenly put in a front wheel drive car, you might really struggle. So, so go with what suits you. Someone also asked me, is motorsport fading in popularity? And I thought this was a really interesting question and I wanted to answer it from my own opinion, uh, rather than doing any particular research or anything like that, which might be a mistake. I mean, you guys can do your own research, whether you agree with me or, or don't. Um, but I have, I got into motorsport because I just fell in love with Formula One. But over the last couple of years, that started to fade. I think um, I always had a favorite driver and that was Mark Webber. And when he left, kind of uh, my interest waned. And I don't, I don't think that's necessarily because I didn't get to look at Mark Webber. It was more because um, just the racing got a bit more dull. It was a bit more processional. And I just kind of fell out of love with it. I was no longer kind of working in the sport. And I realised that before when I was doing talk sport and stuff like that, I was probably only watching races and kind of keeping up on the news so I could talk about it on the radio. So 
it's it's interesting that someone's asked that question because for me my interest in formula one has faded but i see more and more people saying that they've fallen out of love with it as well i mean for example i recently cancelled my sky subscription uh, because the only thing i used it for was formula one and that kind of seemed like a waste of money and a waste of time and now i'm a little bit like oh i'm not gonna watch any races because it's not possible without sky really so uh, I'm kind of, you know, wondering what it is worth watching in that kind of respect. I'm super into Formula E and obviously I'm at so many club races and touring club car races that I get to I get to watch those on a regular basis. But I wonder about the rest of the population. If normal motorsport fans are falling out of love with Formula One and don't necessarily have access to a lot of other uh, racing series or don't know how to get access or just don't have the time to get into something new then perhaps it is fading so it's a difficult question i'd be interested to hear what you think whether you think motorsport is fading in popularity i would say maybe formula one is but motorsport as a whole is not i see a lot more people talking about international motorsport so like you know any of the the tcr series um, the supercar series, all sorts of stuff like that. I see people talking about in detail on my social channels, whereas before it might have only been kind of the odd club race or Formula One. So I think this disinterest in Formula One is making people perhaps seek out other forms of racing to kind of try them out. And I've seen plenty of people who are saying, I tried, I tried watching my first Formula E race or my first IndyCar race because, you know, I want to watch some racing and all this kind of stuff. Um, so I think motorsport is, people are realising that motorsport is so much more diverse than just Formula One or just your local club races. So as a definitive answer, I too long didn't read, I would say motorsport is growing in popularity, not fading. Finally, I was asked what the best road is I've ever driven. And I think that award has to go to the Gross Glockner High Alpine Road in Austria, which I drove last year. Um, sadly in the worst car I've ever driven, um, well, I'm not going to go into that, it upsets me. Um, but yeah, absolutely incredible road that goes up over um, a mountain, it's a, a full mountain pass but it's um, two lanes, lots of switchbacks, it's just beautiful. I actually wrote about it recently on Roadly and then also on Influx magazine which is Adrian Flux's mag and it was just superb. The views were incredible once we got up and over the mountain the first time, um, but on the way up it was just fog. But the road was still fantastic even if you couldn't see anything. So if you're going to Austria, I definitely recommend um, the High Alpine Pass, the Grossglockner High Alpine Pass, or um, in German it's the Grossglockner Hoch Alpine Strasse. Great accent there from someone who speaks German. Um, so yeah, definitely recommend that. One thing that you do need to know, and I got caught out by this when I was in Austria, you need to have something called a vignette, which is like a little sticker that goes in your car um, that, that lets you through tolls. So we kept seeing this thing saying toll, 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 and we're like, okay, there must be a toll coming up. Get the purse ready to put the pennies in. Um, never saw the toll gate, must have missed it. When we got home, maybe like three months later, we got two bills for not paying this toll, which is like a trackable sticker. Um, which would have cost eight euros, cost us 600 euros. So do not make that mistake. If you are gonna go drive um, the Gross Glockner High Alpine Pass, um, make sure you have this sticker, make sure you don't get caught out because, ouch, that made a, you know, that almost doubled the cost of that whole road trip. Um, so yeah, don't make that mistake. If you do um, try that road, go and stay in Heiligenblut, which is the, the little um, town like the, in the valley that you drive to from, from the main highway. It is spectacular, such good hiking, great food, lovely people, schnapps. It's a really good kind of place if you're on a road trip to have a couple of days just to relax and recharge, maybe get back to nature before you hop back in the car and drive somewhere else. So um, from there we actually drove to Vienna. So it was, it was incredible because you get to do the road twice. Feel free to submit your questions for May's q and A. I'm gonna do one of these every month now. So yeah, I love opinion questions, actual kind of helpful sponsorship, racing, careers, business related questions, but then also something silly. Uh, if there's anything you wanna know about me or my history, or you just wanna ask me a stupid question, I'm well up for that. So you can email your questions to jess at racing mentor, or you can post them on social media. You can find me, I am at racing mentor. 
Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.